Greetings, fellow nerds. Welcome to another MTG Nerfle video where we are doing some Strixhaven Standard. Uh, today, we're bringing back um, an archetype that kind of disappeared. Um, I'm going to do my best to see if um, we can bring it back um, a little bit in preparation for D&D. I do believe this is an archetype that might have some uh, support in the upcoming next set just because this type of deck always um, is around in some form or another. It got nerfed to Oblivion uh recently but maybe we'll see some uh good stuff so just uh just some deep thinking ahead so if you want to see more stuff like this be sure to hit subscribe hit that like button hit that notification bell it helps me out with the algorithm it helps you find me a little bit easier in the future uh if you want to see more stuff like this i'm also live on twitch uh playing some mtg some edge fraternity some valo check out that check that out description below which also has my other decks so we're looking at azorius flyers today um yeah, I mean, this deck uh, comes and goes. Um, it's probably It probably reached its peak around um, Dominaria, um, M20 and M21 a little bit. And, but then when the new sets are coming out after that, it definitely teetered off. But um, we're going to try and see if there um, is some way that we can cinch out those victories in this crazy, crazy turn six victory in standard right now. So let me show you what we're working with. So we got um, Shio, we're not using Embros here. Um, Shio's there to um, make our creatures bigger. Um, it's a pretty good early two drop, but we have other two drops we want to be playing. So just a two of. Lofty Denial, um, opponent's always gonna be playing four. Uh, Sky, Sky Cat Sovereign, which gets bigger, of course, and um, a Mana Sink if we ever get flooded. Watcher of the Spheres um, helps gets bigger and costs makes our um, other flyers cheaper. Banishing Light from the Removal. I'm a big fan of this card in Standard, especially in the best of one. Four Elite Spellbinders. Of course, Paulo is here to uh, make opponents' life hell. <laughs> Brazen Borrower, of course, no surprise there. I am trying out Glass Pool Mimic. Um, you know, it can be used as a tap land, but I'm going to see if I can like copy some other creatures that we have going on. Two Glorious Protectors, because we're not playing Angels besides this one. ECD. Uh, Thrix to get our opponent caught off guard a little bit. Two Dream Trawlers um, just for the um, constant threat, really, at the end of the day. Three Arons Epiphany, because why not? Um, and then we got three Castle Arnavales, five Plains, five Islands, two Pathways, two Temple of Enlightenments, and then four Fabled Passage. Um, so, yeah, let's see what this deck can uh, pull off here. Um, I am hoping to... We can get one victory in this crazy meta. That's a win in my book. That is a win in my book any day, if you ask me. Uh, especially with the Emergent Ultimatum. Uh, mono Red, of course, is pretty crazy. It's, mono Red's gonna be pretty cracked until, we're gonna keep this. It's gonna be pretty cracked until uh, Embercleave really rotates out. Um, that's not gonna be for quite some time, but hey, one can hope. So we're playing against Rogues. Uh, what a bore, right? <laughs> um, yep, another deck that's also going to be, you know, not super fun to play against right now. So, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so we lost some decent stuff, but nothing like too crazy. There's the Blood Chiefs. Of course, the opponent has everything they will ever need in their life to function. But, um, I think we can... I think we can we're gonna get rid of one of the crabs here just because i don't want to be milled for six every turn that seems a little ridiculous if you ask me um, sure. yeah, of course so we've lost a lot of stuff already so this match might already be kind of determined here but we're gonna do what we can so probably gonna bounce the thieves guild enforcer we'll kind of see Yep. Seems to be the play. I don't have anything either, which is super important. Probably play the Thieves Gun Force. So we drew um, all our own Epiphany early on. Um, that's really unfortunate when you draw any lands either, um, which doesn't help our cause. So lots of just lots of horrible stuff happening here. Um, everything going as slow as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a scoop. Um, so games like that. Um, they happen, right? You you only play a couple high drops, and then they all happen to appear. Should I have Mulligan that hand? Um, I don't think so, personally. Um, three land hand is always very reasonable to keep. Um, and you don't expect to... 
draw all your Aurum's Epiphany at the beginning of the game. So it was pretty tough working with that kind of hand. Um, but it is what it is, right? This stuff kind of stuff happens. Um, so this is actually a hand I can work with. Glass Bowl Mimic. So I'm going to have... Um, I'm going to do the Glass Bowl Mimic tap to be first because that always comes in tapped. Whereas Cast and Arm Veil could come in potentially untapped. So, um, yeah. Let's, let's see what we can get here. So that was a fast game one, right? Against Rogues. What a surprise. Um, looks like this is Mono White. Uh, okay, so this is Mono White Winota. Very, another fun deck, of course. Um, again, these are decks that you're going to see all the time in Standard Ranked. Um, looks like this is maybe just a Mono White variant. I'm not entirely sure. Um, we'll see what's kind of going on um, in a minute. So, I'm going to go ahead and play Pathway here. We're just going to pass. Um, no read to, no need to foretell quite yet. I'm going to see what he puts it on, and then we get to bounce that guy. So that's a great, so that's why we held back. We're going to take two here, it's not a big deal. Sure. Lofty Denial is great. Um, just not right now, unfortunately. <laughs> um, go ahead and pass. So, again, we drew all our high end cards. <laughs> um, like literally, this is hilarious, but what can you do, right? He has all the Alsace he'll ever need in the world. Hilarious. Okay, that's fine. I can, I can still hold out. I mean, I'm not in immediate threat quite yet, which is nice. Okay, so definitely want to draw something a little bit more relevant, but this is, lands also work now that we technically can play Thrix. So that'll probably throw him off a little bit. Um, I'm going to just foretell here. Why not? And we'll pass the turn. Uh, no attacks. Um, I may end up using him as a jump blocker. I don't really know. Could be the case. Um, so we're going to go ahead and counter that immediately. We do not want a Daxos coming in. Um, that just spells bad news all around. So, Yep. So we're going to take the damage here. That's fine. We can take four. It's not the end of the world. Okay. Cool. So we actually have a pretty... We actually have a great uh, setup here. Because what we can do is we can flash in the Thrix to give our opponent a little surprise. No one ever expects this card either. So that's great. Uh, we might even chump block just depending on what the opponent does. Um, ooh. Okay, Speaker of the Heaven. For sure, kind of a problem. So, I'm going to flash on this guy. Uh, block here. And I'm going to go ahead and... I'll chop block. Uh, I don't need the Brazen Bar anymore. He's not really particularly that helpful right now anyway. So, this looks a little bad, but this is actually pretty decent for us. Gonna go ahead and get a so blue. Everything costs cheaper too with uh, Thrax, which is great. I'm gonna put him out of the. Um, uh, uh, yeah. That one's Epiphany. Why not? <laughs> I feel like we're in a good spot. Oh, Glass Bowl Mimic. It's actually really good right now. Um, I'm just gonna get aggressive. Now's the time. Play a Dream Trawler. Oh, pass turn. Perfect. So we got him out of Speaker of the Heavens range. So no 4 4 Angels. We have a Glass Pool Mimic for another Dream Trawler, which is fantastic. Uh, okay. Who are you going to exile? Probably the Thrix, right? 
No. Um, okay. I mean, that's a relatively easy choice. I'll gain Hexproof. Sure. i very uh, intrigued by the decision, but I'm not going to judge. I want another one, too. Good lord. Lordy, lordy. That's what I like to see. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to hold back the birds. You just never really know what's happening, right? I could play the land, but I'm going to go ahead and keep myself safe a little bit. Um, just because you might have another banishing light. And I want to protect my dream trawlers really at the end of the day. We have lethal, I believe, anyway. So, we're chilling as far as I know. Sure, that's fine. That means nothing. I think we have it. Doesn't have... Oh my goodness. I too have a banishing light for your blocker. Just gonna play it safe here. Um, bada beam, bada boom. Easy peasy. <laughs> Alright, so we beat Mono White. Um, I'm, I wouldn't play the bird in this variant of Mono White if they're kind of have a sub life, sub lifelink theme. So I think that's a bit of a deck building problem on their end. But hey, we will take a victory against Mono White, a pretty heavy meta deck. Um, people play different versions of it, of course, uh, but they usually run um, same few cards. The Banishing Light is um, a good addition and the best of one. In this case, they chose the wrong target um, because uh, they forgot to read. Opponent goes first. We've got a pretty crummy hand, so I'm going to mulligan this. I just don't think I could work with this. Go ahead and keep this. Um, uh, actually, ECD is going to have to go here. Okay, so we seem to have a victory. I did say that was our goal, um, and I think we achieved that. So honestly, we're just riding high now. Uh, no pun intended, right? <laughs> so let's see if we can... I'd be happy. We're going to try out two more games, probably. Um, I'd be happy to see us get a, another victory. So it looks like we're playing against Teamer. Um, I'm actually going to bounce this right away. Uh, mainly because I want them to spend as much mana on their turn. And um, if that requires them to set up more, that's on them and not us. Which is great. Yep, Teamer Adventures. Another deck that hasn't really had the need to evolve, which is nice. Um, but, ooh, I know I'm going to get a Bone Crusher Giant here, but I'm going to run into it anyway. It's good to get information. Uh, Spellbinder will have done his job, honestly, after that point. Ask me. So probably Bone Crusher Giant's coming in right about right now. I'm willing to bet on it. I don't know what I'm willing to bet, but I should have bet something. <laughs> okay, so what do I not want to see? Oh my goodness, I don't know what I don't want to see. All of this is awful. Luca is interesting. I guess in theory, the love struck is the most harmful. They do play the visionary. That makes sense. I mean, it is a card that draws you a card, so it places itself pretty nicely. It ramps. So, it's like one here. Sure, no problem. Um. Oh boy. Um, well, I guess our, really our best play is to foretell Arms Epiphany, but we didn't draw any of our creatures, so we drew all our non-creatures, which is fine. I just don't know if that's going to really do anything on our end to really help us out here. Um, opponent's getting card advantage. Yeah, Edgewall Innkeeper, uh, crazy good card, honestly, just because you get so much advantage out of it. Um, yeah. Uh, another game where we didn't draw any lands, draw drew the wrong cards. Maybe I'm playing too many non-creature spells. That could be the case. Um, I don't have any board wipes either. No, not that I would, but I think was considering all of a sudden. So I'm going to go ahead and scoop here. Um, so this tells me I'm actually playing too many non-creature spells. Um, it could be a stroke of bad luck for sure, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of um, a couple here for sure. So 
Um, so it seems like Lofty Denial isn't really helping us out. So this is interesting. This is the first time I've ever changed in the middle of a video, but I'm gonna cut that down. Uh, where's ECD? Okay, so we want more flyers, right? Um, fly, pretties, fly. Um, so what are cards that I would like to have? Um, so basically our angel could work, but we've been getting a little mana screwed. So I'm a little nervous about that, to be quite honest. Um, hmm. This, actually, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try this thieving skydiver because um, artifacts are a real thing in this. So we're going to we're going to see if that makes a difference. Um, I did keep all the arms epiphany just because I love that card. Um, I think it's very good. As you can see in the second match, it did do some work. So this is interesting, guys. I've never actually I made a couple of changes, like maybe like I forgot to put in field passage or something. But this is this is a pretty big change in general. Ooh, so this is a real instant mulligan. No questions asked. We keep this one for sure. We'll get rid of the Glorious Protector, no problem. Okay. It's another Rogue's deck, so we'll see how this one goes. We're not drawing lands once again. Um, again, that's pretty common on this channel. Um, and it's not really necessarily to, to do with deck building. Uh, just really the randomizer. Um, and we weren't going to draw land next turn anyway, so... Yep, so lots of wonderful things happening here. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try and get as aggressive as possible in the skies. Um, unfortunately, we didn't draw land, which is what we really needed. Maybe our Epiphany also needs to go um, at the end of the day, but it's just a card I enjoy playing, so I don't really want to do that. We can even get it for one more game here, just to <laughs> actually see how the deck functions, like it did the second game. Um, so we're going to try our best. We're going to try our best. That's what we always do here. Wow, we were still not going to get lands. Well, okay. Glass Pool Mimic does count as a land uh, in my mind. Um, opponent is doing fantastic. Um, of one mind. Yep, great addition. Thanks to the CGB um, videos. Cool. We finally draw a land. My goodness. We're going to get a blue here. So we're actually going to go ahead and play Dial. Great. We want a buff here, and then everything else is gonna get a little bit bigger, which is great. And we get to hold. We don't get to hold. Why? What happened here? Um. Oh right, Fable Passage is what happened. Here. Okay. So, um, yep, another Deep Field Enforcer. No surprise there whatsoever. Um. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, we just kind of drew we didn't draw lands and then we drew the failed passage not turn one or turn four um so again everything is going a little haywire but um i'm willing to see if you were in the draw card i would trade works for me okay i mean as far as i know we're still trading so that's fine with me sure that works for me Perfect. okay Ooh, Spellbinder. But we didn't draw a land. Um, so, again, we're in a situation where everything just didn't happen, question mark. Uh, but that's okay with me. Uh, I'm just going to continue trying. We're going to... Oh, that's great. Sure. Um, yeah, we got, we're going to get aggressive here for sure. Um, here's the thing. We're already behind. Um, not much we can do at this point, but we have to keep trying regardless. Um, definitely want to um, not give up here. Very important. Here's the thing. We can also... Um, we're not in a bad spot because um, they're going to be tempted to play Loris, and we get to maybe walk it here. So, yeah. Um, even though the randomizer is screwing us over pretty badly, we have a very good shot here. Um, which is hilarious because I would never think that, you know, we'd be in a position where this was possible, where we're behind on rogues and we still have a chance. Um, and that's, I think that shows you the strength of this deck really at the end of the day. Um, uh, mana screwed doesn't matter. Um, okay. So they do have the four mana. So unfortunate. So I am going to scoop here. So here's the thing. We actually had a very good chance of winning there because they were actually a little flooded. 
Um, so we were screwed. Um, flooded is always being better than screwed, in my opinion, because anything you draw, most likely you'll be able to play. Whereas screwed, um, you're very limited in your options. So we're going to try and get in for one more game here, get in victory. That's very important for... Uh, but the fact that we were holding our own against rogues with three lands, um, with all the heavy drops coming in, um, with um, the way that rogue plays, I think that shows that we had a very good shot. So two tap lands. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Um, I don't really care at this point <laughs> because um, it's very clear that the randomizer just isn't favoring me today um and i say favoring as in like it's working in a very strange way i might need to hmm i'm thinking about things that i could change to add more lands but that just seems a really really ridiculous i am playing the common number of lands um that any deck would play at this kind of curve so i'm not gonna fret too much about it um i'm not gonna chalk it up to you know other random things that are happening because um at the end of the day it's just a randomizer and you got we got to work with what we have right so this i don't know if they're trying to trick me but this could be a gruel deck uh they're probably going like gosh what deck could he be playing with classical mimic and it's probably a deck you haven't seen before so uh opponent don't read too hard into it <laughs> i don't it's probably going on the internet going like what decks play glass pool mimic listen here you're not going to find the answer because I haven't uploaded this on Aetherhub yet. So, nor I don't think you would find it on Aetherhub even if I did. That is interesting. The opponent's thinking really hard. Maybe he's going to give us a free victory. Maybe the opponent's just here to give us a free victory. I don't mind. I don't like victories that way, but it doesn't mean I don't like victories in general. Okay. Okay. Another mono white Winota deck. Yada yada yada. We're gonna go ahead and keep that. That is a land. We like those for sure. Um, so we are playing from behind, but again, doable. If they play a red land, I will probably Elite Spellbinder just to get rid of the Winota. I really don't want to see one. If it's mono white, I think we can hold our own uh, by playing Watcher Through and being a little greedy with a little bit of ramp involved. So, um, yeah, we're just gonna see what we can do here so it is a winota deck so that means i do have to um launch the elite spellbinder i just cannot um i'm playing the cargan intimidator very interesting i'm just not gonna risk the fact that they have a winota because oh, but it could be a turn three skyclave apparition right that could be the case in that case if that is possible then i might not play anything and then wait. They, this opponent is a very slow player. It could be new to magic and they're just trying to find a deck that works. Um, so I'm actually going to wait um, because I am afraid of the Skyclave Apparition. Because um, they probably have it, right? It's always that like turn one, turn two, turn three Skyclave Apparition. Remove like the blocker or blocker or your best blocker. And then turn four Winota and then ruin your day. So um, I'm okay with that whatsoever. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and bounce the Intimidator. If he wants to sack it to protect it, that's fine. That actually puts us in a very good position for the most part, I would say. So, Looks like he is thinking about... Oh, he's going for the Fatal Passage play. Sure. Bone is very slow for a Winota deck. <laughs> I think they're probably just trying to figure it out. Maybe trying to find cool ways to make it work. They actually go for the Protection play. I'm okay with that 100%. I can deal with the Cargan Intimidator pretty easily. Um, uh, sure, I'm taking four, yeah. That's fine. I'm actually surprised. Maybe it's just a Boros aggro deck and I just read it all wrong. Could be the case, could be the case. But, I'm not gonna... Let's find out. Let's find out. Let me see what the opponent's working with. It is a Winota deck. <laughs> oh, wow. They have no lands. I guess Blade has... Jeez, oh, I, I really don't know. I mean... I, I, I guess it's Winota. I mean, I know they don't have any humans, but... I mean... And they top deck the land. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing on them. So... Cool. 
So, yeah, now I can't even trade. Nice work, opponent. Um, ooh, that would have been great if I... Um, oh, man. So we're in a lot of trouble here. Um, I'm, Paula might have to be sacrificed here to the cause. Uh, we're do what we can. We're going to try. We're always going to try. Um... Sure. Uh, opponent is getting exactly what they need. They had the aggressive start. So this is a little bit more human to focus, I guess. I guess they don't really care. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, opponent is doing fantastically well. Just gotta love it. Gotta love it, you gotta hand it to them. You gotta hand it to them. Um, for getting exactly what we need, and of course for us to not um, draw, we drew all the tap lands, we drew everything a little bit late. Um, yeah, so good on them. Uh, can't fault them for it at all. Uh, opponent's just doing well. You know, that's just what it is. Drew the land, of course. So they got another Blade Historian coming out. Um, they have an ECB in hand. Um, yeah, they have this. They definitely have this in the bag. 100%. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. Yep, they figured it out. Okay, so. Um, we're going to stop it there. Um, again, this deck is in the works. We're going to hopefully see more support for it in D&D, which I predict we will. Um, so what did we learn today? Um, tap lands, very bad for standard. Um, just the aggression, the motto or the meta is just too aggressive right now. It's just doesn't make sense. So Temple of Enlightenment, Glass Bowl Mimics probably have to go. Um, Fable Passage, maybe we cut that down to two. Um, just play more basic lands, just stick to the guns. Um, maybe even board wipes is a possibility. I'm not really sure, but, um, it's, this is a good learning experience for us all. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this, even though we didn't get that many victories. This is a very real part of magic and I want to show you what's really happening on arena. Um, so thank you all so much for watching, continue to support, uh, love you all for, uh, that. So right now up top, YouTube is showing a video for my most recent upload and right below that is a video that YouTube thinks you specifically like. So go ahead, check those out. Support our channel helps with the algorithm, all that good stuff. You know what it is. Uh, I'll see you for the next Nerdfill.